Hello everybody, my name is Orlando. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own screen printing transfer. Uh, so we will need the uh, transfer adhesive powder. Uh, you can get this from any uh, screen printing uh, local supply or online. Uh, I got this from uh, Rionet. And then you're also going to need the screen printing uh, transfer uh, paper, which I I got this one, it comes like a hundred sheets in, in one package. It's also from Rionet. But today I'm gonna try this. It's gonna be my first time trying uh, to use uh, parchment paper. Uh, this is regular baking uh, uh, paper for cookies and stuff like that. Uh, it, it appears to be very similar to the, to the paper that I got from Rionet. And I also uh, found on the internet that some people were using this and it was, it was actually working. So I'll try both and we'll see today uh, how that goes. I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be doing a two colors, uh, two color design today. Um, and then this is good for, you know, like my case, in my case, I don't have um, a palette for, for the sleep or, or if you want to print something that, you know, your customer it's always inquiring for that so you don't have to set up the screens all the time so the advantage of having this is that you can print several at one time and then keep it for you know keep it in a, in a box or something in a, in a bag and you can heat press that in the future uh, the disadvantage is that it won't stay as long as the regular screen printing on your t-shirt because it won't cure on your garment it won't you know it will just on the top of the garment look just like you do vinyl and uh, uh, heat transfer vinyl uh, let's go ahead and do it. So uh, what you're seeing right now in the palette, um, this is not the most efficient way. I'm, I'm doing a, only one design. Uh, ideally, you want to do this uh, and cover if you're doing several designs, I mean several copies. You want to make sure that you occupy the entire palette. So I have a 16 by 16. You will want to fit as many as you can uh, so you don't have to do one at a time. Uh, but for demonstration purpose, I'm going to be using only one and that's why I put uh, regular paper around and I just left the part that I'm going to put the, the, the uh, transfer paper. The, the reason for this, I don't want the adhesive palette uh, sticky part to stay, stick on my mesh and, and they will be hard to pull. So let's go ahead and try, uh, once again, we're going to try two procedures, uh, two different papers. Let's start with the regular uh, commercial uh, transfer paper for screen printing transfers. Uh, I'm just going to cut a small piece. So one thing I'm not going to cover today is the setup of the screen, but you have to keep in mind that when you're doing this this type of uh, uh, technique, you have to mirror your image on the software. That's one option before you print the film, or you all or you had to uh, flip it. So I'll show you. you give me just one second. And I'll show you what I, what I mean by that. So uh, this is, uh, for this particular design, this is my film. So I'm using a regular film. Uh, this is uh, just how I would print this on, on my regular screen printing design. Uh, so what I did, because I didn't mirror this on the software, I just flip it and I put it on my screen and then I expose it. So basically it will be exposing backward. But the, the idea for that is that you are not printing this directly into your garment. Because of that, and because you're putting this on a, on a transfer paper, just like you would do heat transfer vinyl, you have to mirror the image or flip this. And then when you press it on, on your t-shirt, it will look just just fine, just the way it's supposed to. So that was just a quick, uh, you know, a quick reminder, so you don't make that mistake. Uh, just, just remember to flip it or mirror the image before you expose it. Uh, the second thing is about match count. So which one should we should be using? So because this is transfer, you want to have some sort of deposit on the on the ink. So you want to have uh, you want to use at least 150 count or uh, sorry uh, 110 or 156 or something like that. So, so uh, you want to have some sort of ink going into the ink. You don't want to use a high match count for this particular transfer. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So I'm gonna, uh, I use the uh, uh, Ecotech SuperTech. This is like a liquid adhesive. 
I put on the palette and then I spread it out evenly so this, this works pretty well you don't want to put a lot on this particular setup because then it will be difficult to remove the paper so just enough for this to stay in place and not moving so let's go ahead and start with the blue one first um, I use uh, regular plastisol ink uh, you wanna when you do this you just want to make sure that the ink is it's not super viscous, super thick. You want to make sure that it's, you know, it flows well on your screen. If it's too thick, make sure to dilute it. Uh, and then you don't want to apply too much pressure on this. So medium, light to medium pressure is fine. One pass. Uh, your off contact, make sure it's at least one eighth of an, uh, of an inch to make sure that when you press and release, the this the mesh the screen retrieve and then you have that separation so that's the first color let me let me get you a little closer uh, on here so you can see that was my first color that's blue um, another thing that I want to mention I'm doing wet on wet and it works and it, it works I already tried this uh, you also have some other techniques like if you want to do multiple colors you will for instance um, you know start with the uh, with the color you want to show first and then let's say it's a three color then you do your second color and then last you're going to do the under base in between uh, in between colors you do uh, a flash the temperature is approximately you don't want to go over 220 you just want to make sure that in between colors this is is dry to the touch, but you don't want to over cure this, otherwise it won't transfer to, the, to your garment. So that will be the, 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 the first way of doing this. I'm not doing that, that procedure today. I'm doing wet on wet, but if you decide to do the, uh, the you know, let's say these two colors, you will do this one first, then flash it for a few seconds, make sure it is dry, then go with the second color. In this case, it will be white. You do your second color. Let's say if, if all you do is two colors, so the last color you don't you don't flash it. You go straight to your to your uh, powder, the uh, the transfer adhesion powder, and then on the last layer you just put that powder and then take it to your conveyor dryer uh, to cure, or to or use your flash dryer to cure. But so that, just keep in mind the last color, the last layer, the under base you don't you don't uh, flash dry, you put the powder because that's what's gonna be your layer to uh, be able to attach to your garment. So today I'm doing the wet on wet, so I did the blue, now I'm gonna do the white. The problem with this is that if you're doing multiple designs, you will have the screen pick up the color from the previous one. So I start with the smallest. If you notice, I started with the, with the letters first, and then I'm gonna go with the outline, which occupies most of the uh, most of the screen uh, and that that way I don't have to pick up uh, a lot of the ink that was already deposited from the previous spring so you might not be able to see that as well because it's a white color uh, but it is there and it looks just fine I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on the uh, uh, on the powder one second guys all right so let's see if you can see that there right here all right so let's go ahead and put it on on the uh, adhesive powder uh, this is just the regular uh, I'll show you uh, transfer adhesion powder uh, I got this from Rayonet but you can get from any local supply that, that sells screen printing uh, supplies so let's go ahead let me make sure that you are able to see that so what i'm doing here is basically i want to cover uh the all the design that was with ink with this powder so you can just go like this and make sure you cover everything right you can do it a couple of times and once that's done you had to the, uh, remove the excess of, of powder, right? So if your fingers have grease or you know they're dirty, you have to be very careful because when you put your fingers on, on the edges of the paper, it will leave your 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 uh, fingerprint 
and that will transfer to your garment if you're not careful. So what I do is I try to get as much as I can. I cure this on the on the conveyor dry, and then when I'm ready to transfer, I just trim and I cut as much as I can, so I don't I don't have that issue. Uh, this is ready to go to the conveyor dryer. If you don't have a conveyor dry dryer, you can use a heat press. Sorry, uh, not a heat press, uh, a flash dryer. Just make sure your temperature doesn't go over 280 Fahrenheit. Otherwise, you will over cure this, and it will not it, it will not transfer to your to your garment. So I show you here. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna put this on the other side. I already have this conveyor dryer set up at 280. And then um, I have also a temperature, uh, infrared temperature gun that can, you know, where I can see the, the actual temperature. I don't know if you can actually see the number there. Uh, let me get you as close as I can. That's reading 280 to 66, 280. So 280 is a good temperature for this. Uh, you want to just make sure that it is dry to the touch. So let me let me show you so in this case uh, so if you go with your finger and touch it nothing should come nothing should stay nothing should stay on your finger so this is good this is good to go so once again this is with the commercial uh, paper the the screen printing transfer paper transfer paper what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to use the uh, parchment uh, parchment paper for uh, baking and see if that is going to work. Uh, if it does work, you guys have another affordable way of doing this. Um, you know, it's a mu much cheaper to, to do it with this. So let's set on my paper here. Uh, once again, I'm using a plastic saw ink. Uh, it looks, guys, like I'm going to have to add a little more adhesive because this is not stick into the to the palette so I use uh, as I mentioned before Ecotech super tag um, adhesive I'm just gonna add a little bit and then spread it out if you have a heat gum you know this is also another way to do it you spread it out and then uh, you use the heat gun just to dry this a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I didn't add too much. So I'm going to have this just a few seconds so it will dry. And once it dries, it, it gets very, very sticky. Okay, so that should be enough. Let's give it another try. That, that will work. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same, the same procedure that let's do blue first. And then let's go ahead and do the white. Again, you don't want to apply uh, a lot of pressure, just light to medium pressure, just enough to deposit the right amount of ink. All right, you might not be able to see this here. Actually, it looks a little better than the previous one on the white. So let's go ahead and, and take it to the, to the potter and let's see how that one goes. Once again, you want to make sure you cover the entire area where the ink was. This is what's going to allow the, the print to stay on your garment. So once you give it a few passes, just make sure you remove the excess of, of powder. And then take it to your flash dryer or your conveyor dryer for a few seconds. So you want to speed up the bell, the speed of the bell if you have a conveyor dryer. Uh, you don't want to make you don't want to leave this too long inside so 
I think it takes about five to six seconds once he enters the conveyor drive to get out. And I think that should give it a, a good amount of time to, proper time to uh, just cure enough, but not over cure it, that it won't transfer. Uh, let's make sure the temperature is right when it comes out. Once again, you want to have this at around 280 Fahrenheit. That's 274, 269, yeah, that's, so that should be fine. All right, now let's go ahead and show you both. So this is how it, look, it looks like. And then the other one is the regular, uh, the regular transfer paper for screen printing transfer. So what I'm gonna do next is take this to the heat press. Uh, I'm gonna go inside the house where I have all the equipment for heat transfer vinyl. So I will use a heat press and I'm going to uh, set up the the heat press at uh, 320 Fahrenheit for 40 seconds and then uh, we're going to transfer both we're going to see how each one I know for sure the uh, the heat transfer um, uh, paper for screen printing works just fine I did several already in Garmin and it works fine this is the first time doing with uh, parchment paper so let's see how that one goes and then I'll show you guys soon uh, and see if it works Okay, so I already have my heat press set up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 seconds. So let's go ahead and do the first print. Uh, it's gonna be the regular uh, uh, transfer paper for screen printing. So I'm gonna put it on the left side of the t-shirt and I'm gonna use a, a Teflon sheet to prevent any ink from going on my press. So once again, this is gonna be pressed for 40 seconds and then it's gonna be uh, peeled while it's hot. This particular press has a, uh, a gauge here that as you turn it to graduate the pressure, it will give you a number. So that way you can always find your uh, proper and duplicate a setup for a particular type of garment. This is a cotton 100% cotton t-shirt um, and it's, uh, it's set up at 15 uh, that's just a number that reference the, the pressure on that particular setup alright so let's see how that works so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it for a little longer because it looks like it didn't, um, it needed more time too. So if it, that's what you can do if you start peeling and you see uh, the the ink is, is peeling from the garment, then you can apply a little more heat and try again. So I, I did another 20 seconds. And let's try again this time from this side. Alright, so it looks like this particular, uh, I'm going to apply, I don't know if you noticed, but I peel that and then I, I'm going to apply a few more seconds to the, um, to the design, so to make sure that it stay on the garment. One thing that I noticed is that it didn't peel right, you know, there's some deposit of ink is still on the paper. This could have been the I over cured on the press or um, yeah it, it, that's that's the only possible way so I will show you it transferred probably like 95% uh, but you still see some details on the uh, on the print so if you notice some of the characters didn't the white part the underground I mean background is not there same as the pop so let's see what happened to with the other with the other transfer. So let's try this time the uh, uh, permage paper and see how that one works. So once again, uh, the heat press is set up at 320 Fahrenheit and we're gonna press it for 40 seconds. Uh, this is actually the first time that I'm seeing this issue, like a lot of 
material, a lot of ink not peeling. So I had to check out the temperature on my um, on my uh, conveyor dryer. I did several designs with this before, and I didn't have that issue. There were some in instances where you have a lot of corner that wasn't peeling correctly, but as once you apply a lot more heat, then it was working. Uh, it could also be the type of fabric. This is the first time that I'm using this one, uh, this particular T-shirt, but I, I had to check. Now this one came out way nicer than the previous one. So this paper actually looks like it's gonna work better than the conventional paper. So I'm gonna just do the same thing that I did with the previous. I'm just gonna apply a few more seconds just to the design itself. I already transferred and I can tell you that there was nothing left on the paper, on the par parmesan paper. So that's gonna be a an okay technique and option to do if you guys decide to use that. So 20 seconds should be fine. And let me show you how that came out. So on the left, we have the design with the with the previous, uh, with the regular transfer paper. And then on the right, with the parchment paper. You can still see a small details on the pop that didn't transfer correctly, but like I say, this is, is something that can be due to the, uh, uh, the temperature, probably was over cured in the conveyor dryer, or probably not enough powder. It's something that you have to try a few times until you get it right. But it works. So in principle, both papers will give you the right uh, result, uh, which is transfer. And then uh, so I see no reason why you shouldn't, you know, use permish par par paper if you don't have the, if you don't have uh, the budget to buy the most expensive paper so that's good uh, I also wanted to show you in future videos I'm gonna be uh, doing a, a few uh, lessons on how to, how to set up the, the embroidery machine so this is the Brother PR 1050X 10 needle embroidery machine uh, the press that I use right here is uh, it from his he presentation uh, that's what I use for heat transfer vinyl. I also have the press for hats and coffee mug heat press on this side. Uh, I have a small embroidery machine here. This is the Brother uh, SE600. I use it mainly for training purposes. So when I do a design, I digitize a design on my software. I try here, I do fixes, and this is just my practice machine. And then I use this for commercial embroidery. Uh, baby clothes, hats, and that kind of stuff that customer requests. Then I have a uh, Cricut machine, Cricut Maker. This is for my heat transfer vinyl. And then I have my sublimation printer. This is a Sawgrass SG500 uh, sublimation printer. Uh, we'll be recording uh, videos soon on each one of these machines, each one of those techniques. And I will be demonstrating, you know, the software that I use, how I do the designs and everything. Uh, but that's everything for today. So once again, I wanted to show you the results on both. Um, on your, on the right side, you have the garbage paper. And then on the left side, you have the regular uh, screen printing paper. So I have other, other uh, tries that I did on on the, on the regular screen printing paper. This is how it looks, so I know it works. It's just uh, this particular time, it could have been the heat or something on the conveyor dryer that didn't, um, it wasn't right. But you do after you do it a few times and you get the timing, everything should be fine. Uh, once again, thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and press the be uh, bell button for notifications on new videos. And uh, see you guys soon.